let's go to the second part of today's demo, which is playbooks. Now, as we've, we've been working with data teams, one common theme all of them are talking about is they want to automate metadata at scale, right? And we've seen, seen things like this on the right, right? Like it, all other teams, marketing teams, sales teams are already using similar kind of things, whether it's via Zapier, IFTTs of the world, where if you get a lead, do X, do Y. And when we started doing discovery with our data teams, we got tons of use cases. All data teams wanted to drive use cases like this, but they may not have bandwidth. They didn't have engineering folks who can help them to actually write scripts because engineering folks are busy in fixing pipelines or doing requests, and data teams wanted to solve some of this. So introducing Atlin Playbooks, which is the first low-code, no-code metadata automation, similar power like Zapier, but applies on your data estate. So, so I'm sure we, we can't go through all of these use cases today. So we've picked three amazing use cases for this demo. We'll start with the first one, which is, which is asset deprecation. So let's say you want to deprecate assets which have not been queried, which have been not been queried in the last three, 365 days. And you want to deprecate them, add a certificate, and later decide whether you want to actually deprecate it in your physical layer. So it's almost like a retention policy or a deprecation policy. So let's see what we can do here. So we have filtered all our assets into Snowflake. Let's say I want to find all assets which have been last queried before 2021, 31st December. As soon as I switch that, looks like it reduces the scope. Suddenly we have less assets, which likes a lot of unused assets, which is business as usual for a lot of data teams, right? Now, if you just quickly hover on this filter, let's convert this filter to a playbook. So for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna you know, call it Snowflake Deprecation Playbook. This, let's do a quick create. As soon as I did that, it automatically landed up into the playbook section in the governance screen, where it automatically applied some of these filters for you saying, hey, if connector is Snowflake and last query is before this, it gives you a preview that there are 14K actually assets that have not been queried. And you can see a quick preview in case maybe you want to change the rules, do something. And you can then take action. So for the sake of this demo, what we are going to do is for all the assets which have been not used, maybe for the last 365 days, let's add this certificate deprecator so that folks know that they should check before using some of this because this might be stale. So as soon as you do this, it's as simple as that. We just did some filtering, clicked the button, it was able to create, and we can decide to schedule this. Now you can decide when you want to schedule. What this will mean is you can set up not this as a one-time thing, but you can ensure that every time there's an asset which crosses this window of staleness or unusage, you can keep marking them as deprecated, right? And later decide whether you actually want to clean it up in your warehouse or decide not to clean it up because there is actually relevant. So that's, that's the first playbook, which is one of the most common playbooks that we've been seeing, especially in the new macro world where everybody wants to save cost. Let's go to the second one, which is change and add ownership. Let's take a Salesforce example. So I'm just gonna clear all the filters. We will switch to Salesforce. As soon as I switch to Salesforce, the whole discovery experience switches to a Salesforce experience. Now I can see only Salesforce assets, which are these objects, fields, organizations that have been set up and one common use case is I want to tag all of them as the owners for all of this is the revenue ops team in the company. And I want to make sure if there's any asset that gets set up on Salesforce, it's always tagged as owners as RevOps. This is to ensure people don't reach out, people reach out to the right people in case they, have, they need any clarity. So in this case, let's do the same. We'll convert this again, filter into playbook. Let's time this time, let's call it Salesforce ownership playbook. As soon as we do this, again, we made it easy. 
all the things are set up here. You can see a quick preview. But in this case, let's do owners. And maybe we have a RevOps group here. Yes, we do. So we can set this up again, decide to schedule it or just run once. And in future, we're bringing more actions. We're bringing, but you can share this on an email, share it on Slack, create a Jira issue if something goes wrong. If your popularity data or if your any distinct data got missing, you can create a Jira issue. So tons of use cases coming up with the action framework going forward. Let's switch to now the third, third one, which is what we call active trust management. How do we become proactive and ensure if someone uses a data asset, it's highly trusted. And one uh, metadata that plays a big role is the profiling metrics. This could be your distinct, your mix, your minimum, your maximum about a column. So we took a different approach for profiling and we leveraged our playbook framework to drive profiling for data teams. So in fact, we built a special playbook called the profiling playbook. So let's try this out as well. Who doesn't like an icon, so emoji. So I'm just gonna add an emoji. Let's select, I want to run it for Acclin demo. So now you don't want to maybe profile for all your assets, all your table and views, because one, you want to save cost. You don't, maybe all of them are not getting used. You can use popularity metadata to only uh, uh, do profiling for only your top assets. Or maybe if, if you have a certification framework, you can say, hey, I want to profile, but I want to only profile assets which are verified because those are the assets that my team cares about, right? So I want to make sure they are trusted, the right metrics are available. So that when they do, next time they do a join, they know which are the right joins to do. They, if they are using a column for a data science model, they, they should know uh, which is the right column or they should use it or they should not. So again, you see a preview, like looks like only five assets are available. You see an action. Now you don't see all these action, but you see profiling. You can again decide there is a collection of metrics that you can decide there are some advanced metrics as well. Again, the power is in your hands uh, as data teams. Uh, you can decide what metrics is relevant for your team, what elements is available for these assets. Again, if you want to schedule this, you can schedule this, or if you just want to run once, to get some sample data available, sample metrics, you can set this up as well. And once you run some of this, so some of this are already running. So let's go to reporting center. Again, we've made it easy again for you to always look at a 30,000 feet. So as you can see here, there are three active playbooks. One has been scheduled. These many assets are getting updated. Uh, what have been the number of playbook runs? Are there, you can do observability in case some of the playbooks are failing. Who are the users that are using playbooks? Again, all the rich metadata, aggregated level of metadata available for you to have a 30,000 feet control across your data estate. So in the, in the last five minutes, we created three playbooks. We created a scalable deprecation policy playbook, which will help us deprecate assets on a regular basis, not as a one-time project. We created an ownership playbook to make sure ownership is always assigned uh, with every new asset that might land. And third, we created an active trust playbook, which is you are able to profile your top assets to make sure when somebody is using a column for a data science model, when somebody is using the col column to drive new insights, they have these metrics available uh, right there in context when they're driving the use case. 